Good morning, church. Lovely to be here. Um, I think one has to first extend a happy Mother's Day to uh, all the mothers and all those people who play uh, mother figures to, uh, to everyone. I think for some of us, we we have to wait for, for the sun to shift so that uh, our mothers can wake up. But I want to yeah, just to extend a happy Mother's Day to all the mo mothers and people who play a mother figure. Um, just before we we partake in communion today, I just want us to reflect a bit um, on the story of um, the institution of um, the Lord's Supper. I I always find that story very very fascinating. Um, um, uh, I find that there's there's just so much. Um, that was happening during that uh, that period, um, and I think just to magnify its importance, the fact that it's recorded in three of the gospels um, 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 and it's laid out there um, makes it uh, you know one of the most important stories that uh, that one can 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 look at. But I just want to look at it from a point of what actually was happening um, at that room. Um, the scripture that we are looking at, as I said, both accounts of Matthew and Mark um, um, and Luke, they do cover the story. Um, I just chose Luke for a specific reason, uh, because when they were given an instruction to say, go into the city and prepare uh, for us to partake the Passover, uh, Passover lamb, they were also given very specific instruction in terms of go to the city, you will find a man with a house. Um, I like Luke's account, um, I think also Mark's account also goes to say, when you get there, um, the, the house is going to have an upper room. Um, um, it's going to have an upper room. Uh, Matthew doesn't mention that. There is no significance of the upper room. I don't think it was just the style of the day. But what I just want to highlight was what was happening in that upper room. Um, the story of orderliness that quickly translated into confusion. Um, if you look at how it was well prepared, how Christ gave them specific instructions to say, go into the city, this is the man, this is the house. Both accounts also say when they got there, they found it as is. That is a story of preparation. But what we find that it quickly descends into a story of chaos, a story chaos. Sorry, that's my South African. A story of chaos. A story where once they've been told that this is what's going to happen, both accounts tells us that they were saddened. Matthew's account says they were very, very sad. It was not only the sad state of affairs that was happening in that upper room. Both accounts also say they started to, um, um, to, to, to have questions amongst themselves. Um, they started to question each other. Is it me who's gonna uh, who's gonna who's gonna who's gonna betray Jesus? Is it is it me who's gonna be the one? On top of that, they also started having disputes in terms of um, um, uh, saying who is the greatest amongst them. I think the, the the main point was maybe to say I am the greatest. I'll never betray Christ. I do not know. But for me, the contrast that I always look at this story of orderliness that translates into chaos is to say, in today's term, I always look at our present assembly as that setting of an upper room. To say, when we are about to partake in what we are, about, what we are instructed to do in the three Gospels, the mood is very different. 
Yes, we come from the same position of orderliness, of preparation. We prepare, we have people who come in and they prepare, they know, on a Sunday. But there's aspects that we don't have. They were saddened, but we come from a place of joy. They were in a state of, 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 of despair, but we are not coming from a state of despair. They had questions about who's going to betray him, but today when we come to this upper room, we come with certainty. We come, we come with a blessed assurance. We come with assurance. Their chaos descended to disputes, but today, when we are about to partake, we do not have any dispute. Yes, we might have doubts, we might have issues in our lives, but when it comes to this moment of focusing on the cross, of focusing on Christ, on focusing on what happened on Calvary, we do not question, we do not have dispute, we are not saddened, we are coming from a point of joy. I always wonder, uh, as, as, as we conclude before we, we, we partake, both accounts say that they closed by singing a hymn. Uh, Matthew says they sang a hymn when it closes the chapter. Luke, they sang a hymn. Um, um, uh, Mark, they sang a hymn. And I've always wondered how the mood of that hymn would have been. These are people who went into the room well organized, a curve ball was thrown into them, thrown into chaos, confusion. But at the end, they sang a song. I always picture uh, the 12 men uh, um, um, uh, singing this, this hymn. You know, I, I don't think they, they, they even had the tune right. This is just me imagining. But I always look at saying, when we come today into partaking. We have the joy of singing whatever we want to sing about Christ. We can sing um, a, a mansion robe and, uh, and crown because we have the assurance. Because we, we know that what happened in Golgotha is not a sad thing. We can sing, um, um, uh, he gave me a new song. We can sing, he could, uh, he could have called 10,000 angels because we are at a position of, not, of, 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 of no worry, of no question, of no dispute. As I said, I always wonder what sort of hymn they sang. And as you are about to partake, I just wanted to cast our eyes back a bit just to reflect on how the scene was when this has been instituted, when what was instituted, and just to bring it to say we are at a different dispensation. We are glad, we are happy because of what happened in Golgotha. And what we are about to partake has been instructed by Christ um, as, as written in scripture, he broke bread, he prayed, um, and that's what we're going to do. Let us pray for the bread. Heavenly Father, we come to you this morning. Having reflected on how this was institu instituted, dear Lord. Heavenly Father, we ask that each one of us, dear Lord, has taken a moment, dear Lord, to reflect on the significance, dear Lord, of what your death on the cross means, dear Lord. To reflect, dear Lord, on the fact that we are not sad, dear Lord, as we partake this. We are not in dispute, dear Lord, 
but we come from a point of joy, of happiness, dear Lord. Heavenly Father, we ask that you bless these emblems, dear Lord, as we are partaking them. We ask in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. As it's so, so written in scripture, um, uh, we're going to pray for the fruit of the vine. Heavenly Father, we also come to you, dear Lord. Thankful, dear Lord, for what this fruit represents, dear Lord, fruit of the vine, dear Lord. Heavenly Father, we are joyful, dear Lord, at this moment, dear Lord. Because of this blood, dear Lord, we are part of this new covenant, dear Lord, which you have made with your people, dear Lord. Heavenly Father, we ask that you bless this fruit of the vine as we partake it. We ask this in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen.